Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again. And today we are starting with uh, imperialism, and we're going to start <clears throat> first with uh, the United States and how we acquired Hawaii. Uh, and the first word is Queen Lilio Kalani. I know it's kind of a little bit difficult to pronounce, but uh, um, Queen Lilio Kalani uh, was the last uh, Hawaiian queen, and she was forced out of power by a revolution, and the revolution was started by American business interests. So this was not a revolution where you typically think of an invasion and, you know, uh, all sorts of weapons and, you know, uh, killing and death. Um, it was a revolution where American businesses eventually and slowly but surely uh, took control financially of the islands. Hawaii eventually became so dependent on the economic investments uh, by American uh, planters mainly, and you might be familiar with Sanford Dole, I uh, was one of the people, uh, the Dole Fruit Company, and they just became so influential financially um, that they really, uh, the, the fruit company owners were the ones that called the shots, and um, the queen eventually uh, had to resign and leave power. Um, imperialism. This is what we're talking about. Um, this is the main thrust of these, this sort of whole chapter. Um, it really is when you have strong countries taking over, um, and they take over always, economic, political, and military. They take over power uh, from weaker countries. And of course, there's not a lot that weaker countries can do. In fact, uh, today, actually it's, it's Monday, the first day back from break, uh, but today uh, we learned that uh, Russia uh, was taking over even more of Ukraine today, and Ukraine can't do anything about it uh, because um, they're not as powerful. If you look at this sort of uh, picture here, though, you see it says China right there, and you see people from all various sort of different uh, um, countries. You see England right here. This looks to be Germany. This would be Russia. This would be France. This would be Japan. And you see the person from China going, wait, what are you guys doing? And they're dividing up, they're sort of carving up China into little, little slices there because you have the more powerful countries um, deciding who gets what of China, and the people of China have no say in it. Alfred T. Mahan, uh, he's important because he urged the United States, said you must have a strong Navy. Um, that's the way to be successful and be the way uh, you can take colonies. Uh, and certainly the United States, even to this day, has by far uh, the most powerful Navy in the world. William Seward, I know it's a bizarre last name, but believe it or not, um, he was Secretary of State under President Lincoln and President Johnson. But the big thing is that he was responsible for purchasing Alaska from Russia. So he noticed that in some ways, like with Hawaii, it was an economic takeover uh, to in order for us to add territory. In this case, uh, William Seward purchased Alaska, so purchasing would be another way to add territory. Uh, and so there are more ways than just simply attacking uh, that you can gain territory. Pearl Harbor. Now, obviously, this is going to be uh, much more important as we get close to uh, uh, World War II. Uh, but it also, before the war, was a very, very important uh, trade uh, location in Hawaii. There's Sanford B. Dole with his uh, wonderful beard. As you can see, it's, uh, well, there's one half of his beard there. It's really, really, uh, <laughs> I don't see many like that. But at any rate, um, he was an American businessman. He became president of the new government of Hawaii after the queen was pushed out. So he talked about businessmen and their influence. Um, and Sanford B. Dole, the Dole Fruit Company, was certainly one of uh, the, the main people. And he ended up, of course, becoming president temporarily uh, of the new government of Hawaii. Well, that is it for today. Thank you so much.